Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. We continue thanking the Lord for the Father that He has brought us. We want to do an introduction. Bible study, Bible study. And today we want to begin from the book of John with an incident that happened on the last day of camp meeting. John chapter 7, verse 37 to 39. John chapter 7, verse 37, 38, and 39. The Bible says, On the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Verse 38, whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. Then John gives a commentary on the words of Jesus Christ. He says that by this he meant the spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time, the spirit had not been given since Jesus had not yet been glorified. Lord, we thank you that you want to speak to us. We pray that we may not only feel your presence, but may we hear your voice, and may what that you speak to us, may it bring transformation and a new worldview, for this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Jesus speaks on the last and greatest day of the great feast. This is on the eighth day of camp meeting. The name that they gave it was Hoshana Rabbah. If you directly translate that, it would mean it is the save now day. Let us put this in context. Up to this point, what has been happening? Why is Jesus rising up to make this statement? Now, each day of camp meeting, each day of camp meeting, morning hours, they'd have what we call the water libation ceremony. It is basically the pouring of water before the presence of the Lord. And this would take place each morning of the camp meeting for eight days. The incident takes place in the last day. So what would happen? Everyone would meet in church, that is at the temple, and then led by the priests, there would be a procession that would move, or rather move from the temple down to the pool of Siloam. And now because everybody has come from far and wide to come and celebrate camp meeting, it would be that the people would line the streets. And it is actually the priests who would move from the temple to the pool of Siloam and back. And as they were making this great procession, there would be a lot of singing. Psalms chapter 114, 115, 116, 117, 118. These are the songs that they are singing as there is a procession of priests from the temple going all the way to the pool of Siloam. One of the priests would be carrying a golden pitcher. Basically, it's a container made of gold. And so that would be the central figure in this procession. Around him would be the priests. And they would make their way down to the pool of Siloam, the only source of fresh water in the city. 
And interestingly, Siloam means the sent one. Keep in mind, John has given us a commentary that this whole thing is about the Holy Spirit. They are celebrating camp meeting. One of the reasons they are celebrating camp meeting is a commemoration of their experience in the desert. So there is a lot of water symbolism in camp meeting. And as you will see, every item is about water here. It's talking about the Holy Spirit in one way or another. And so they make their way down to the pool of Siloam, which means the sent one. Then the priest would collect the water. Then they would make their way back into the temple. And the priest would pour out this water at the altar. And as the priest is pouring out this water, they would mix it with wine and then pour it on the altar. Altar had a small hole that would receive the water. Symbolizing typically what would happen to the ultimate sacrifice of Christ on the cross. That when his side would be pierced, there would be a mixture of water and blood. So they would pour this out. It was symbolic. And as they are pouring the water before the Lord, the priests that are surrounding, the one that was pouring out the water, would recite a verse from the Holy Scriptures. Let us together go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 44. This is what the priests are reciting as the one who has been carrying the golden pitcher has collected the water. Now he is pouring out this water before the presence of the Lord. Isaiah chapter 44. And this is verse 2. These are the words of God himself. Thus says the Lord who made you and formed you from the womb, who helped you. They are reading the words of Christ. This is a promise that is made to God's people in the Old Testament. This is that these are the scriptures that they have. There is no other scripture. They are reading from the book of Isaiah. And what are the priests reciting? They are saying, Fear not. O Jacob, my servant, and you, Jeshurun, which is another name for God's people, whom I have chosen, why should we not fear, Lord? Verse 3 says, For I will pour water on him who is thirsty. The priest is pouring the water before the Lord, and then the priests are surrounding him, are reciting these verses in the hearing of the congregation. And they are saying, God, you made a promise. And as we symbolically pour out this water before you, we want to claim that promise. They say, you talked to us. To those who heard Isaiah speaking. But you also promised the same. You said to the children. We are your children. We recite these words before you as we pour out this water. And what is the promise? You, Lord, you told us, for I will pour out on him who is thirsty and floods on the dry ground. I will pour my spirit on your descendants and my blessing on your offspring. And they will spring up among the grass like willows by the water courses. And once that is recited, there would be a deathly silence 
in the temple. And everybody would bow down and make two prayers. The first prayer would be, God, send us rain. They were asking for physical rain. Because camp meeting is the last ceremony of the calendar of events of the year. They have harvested, they have stored up everything that needs to be stored. It has been taken away. They come rejoicing before God and saying, God, as we go into a new season, send us rain. Prayer request number one. They prayed for the physical, material things of this world. That as the rain comes, so shall we prosper. We said we are going to be talking about water a lot. They said send physical rain. And number two, they said a second prayer, which was send us the Messiah. Two prayer requests that are made every morning as they pour water before the Lord. They make these requests. And they will do this for seven days. But on the eighth day, there would be a slight significant variation to the ceremony. That as the priest got to the pool of Siloam, he pretended to collect the water. So on the eighth day, he would carry an empty container from the pool of Siloam. And they would pour out the same empty container before the Lord. Recite the same verses. Now you begin to see why they are reciting that verse. They are saying we are empty, but we want to claim something that God has promised. You said there will be water upon those who are thirsty, and if we are like dry parched land, symbolically referring to the desert, you shall pour upon us water. We are empty. We come before you with a dryness. We want you to fill us, Lord. And it is in this context that Jesus rises that as everybody is quiet, he makes this announcement and says, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. A solemn exercise. Everybody is quiet. Now this is the time where we want the ushers to do their work and carry this noisemaker out. But there's something very, very significant that Christ is speaking to. He says that ceremonies that we do, that we perform before the Lord, are not empty. He says, I stand before you to fulfill what? Scripture. He says, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me. And then he proceeds to say that whoever believes in me, Christ introduces faith into the equation. That God's promises are delivered to us by faith through who? Jesus Christ. He says, if anyone believes in me, as the scriptures have said, which scriptures? What they've just read from Isaiah. And what does the scripture say? It says that rivers of living water will flow from within them. Let us make a few points. Point number one. That as we come into this camp meeting this week, understand that God is tabernacling with us. Christ is standing within us and saying, whoever is thirsty, is extending 
an invite to each and every one of us. And he's saying, are you thirsty? Are you dry? Do you have a certain fear, a concern in your life? He says, I am here. Point number one. Point number two, that as Christ invites us, what is he inviting us to do? He says, speak to the rock. Say, so there is a lot of symbolism here from the Old Testament. Paul says that as the children of God are traversing the desert, there is a rock that produces water that follows them from place to place. And he says that rock is Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Christ says that as I invite you, as you come to the rock, talk to the rock. Don't strike it, don't pump it up. Those are the terms and conditions. That as we come to Christ, there are two things we must avoid. One is striking. What do we mean? We go back to our ceremony. We are moving from the pool of Siloam back to the temple. One of the things they would do is that the priest would hold five branches of the willow plant and uh, every few meters they would stand or rather they would stop and the priest would strike the ground with those willow plants. Remember the verse in Isaiah talks about they will spring up like what? Willow plants. So in striking the ground as they are going through this process, what are they saying? They are saying, we do not deserve. That we are in the promised land where it's supposed to be flowing with milk and honey, meaning there's supposed to be lots of rain, but we are experiencing a dryness. And they are saying, Probably it is because of our sin. And most of the time when we come to Christ, we beat ourselves up. Christ is saying that as you come, talk to the rock. Don't strike. Don't beat yourself up and say that I do not deserve to be in the presence of God. But at the same time, don't pump it up. Don't beat your chest. We go back to the symbolism of water. Book of Deuteronomy. As Moses is parting ways with the Israelites, he tells them a very interesting thing. That the land that you go into, God will bring down the rain. You will not need to pump up as you did in Egypt. Because that is what they used to do in Egypt. That if you are going to plant anything, you must irrigate it. And how do you irrigate it? There was technology of the time which involved pumping of the water, laborious, tedious, in the hot sun for you to plant anything. They had to pump water into the gardens. Moses tells them that there will be a difference. That when you get there, you will not need to pump up the water because God will make it Rain. That as we come before God and want to speak to the rock that produces the living water that is supposed to quench us, we are saying terms and conditions. Number one, don't beat yourself up. Believe that God wants to bless you. But number two, don't beat your chest and parade your goodness before God. Because if it is fake, and it is a fake reform and revival, it will die. Where do we get that from? Another symbolism, anointing oil. God says in the book of Exodus, should be chapter 31, God patented anointing oil. He said nobody should make an oil like this one. Number two, it is only I who chooses who to anoint. And he says, if you choose for yourself people to anoint, and you create the same oil, 
that person must die. The symbolism being that anything that you pump up, that you beat your chest about, only leads to death. Christ says we are making prayers both for physical and spiritual things. We are feeling a certain dryness, a certain thirst. We want to be quenched. But he says that as you come, just talk to the rock. Avoid beating yourself. Avoid, avoid pumping it up. Another point. Christ says that whoever believes in me, let anyone. Christ does not put limitations to what the dryness can be. That this week, if what you want to lift up before the Lord is yourself, well and good. If it is your partner, well and good. If it is your children, well and good. If it is your parents, well and good. If it is your marriage, family, business, your health, Christ says, if anyone, it is open-ended. It is different from those who are spiritually poor inherit the kingdom. That is closed statement. If you are spiritually poor, the only reward you get is the kingdom. But when it comes to this invite, it is limitless. That this week, Christ is saying that as you speak to the rock, he does not limit what you can speak to him about. And as we speak, we speak with great expectation. That for you to feel a dryness, that you are thirsty, it means the spirit is working in you. We want to pick the figure of the spirit as it is descending in the early church, in the book of Acts. The writer Luke says that when I interviewed people who were present, who experienced it, they said that we felt as if a wind rushed upon us. And Isaiah chapter 40 says that when the breath of the Lord passes, it makes things dry. So if you are feeling a certain need in your life, know that the Holy Spirit is working in your life. Because there are people who are going through the same thing, but they don't see the need of bringing that thing before who? Before God. That we are talking about faith from beginning to the end. That even the dryness that you feel in your life, the fact that you want to bring it, is evidence that the Spirit is already working in you. And therefore, we must have great expectations. Christ says, come. I am here. If it is rain, things in the physical, I want to provide. If we are talking in the spiritual realm, I am here. Come, I am the answer to those prayers. That as you come, just speak to me. There are those, there are, it is not a matter of there are those who are too qualified and those who are not qualified. He said that all of us come before him on equal footing. And then he says that as we come before him, there is no limit. And as there is no limit, then we can come before him with great expectation. Finally, is what John gives as a commentary. He says, by this, he meant the spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. That as we speak to God, as we bring our prayers before him, our concerns, as we come before him with great expectation, understand that sometimes it may take a while. 
That is what John is saying. That he promises great things. But this is seven months before Christ goes to the cross. After the seven months and Christ is crucified, he will be with his disciples for 40 days. After the 40 days, they will pray for the spirit for how many days? How many days? How many days will the disciples pray and wait for the Holy Spirit? We do it every January of every year. That is usually the first activity of the year. We call it the 10 days of John says, I am describing something that happened seven months before Christ comes back to Jerusalem and is crucified. Later on, he would stay with his disciples for 40 days. And then we will pray for 10 days and then the Spirit would come. That as we believe that God is tabernacling with us this week, as we bring limitless requests before him, as we have great expectation, we must also be ready to be patient. John says he meant the spirit that those who believe in him would later receive. And as we talk about going, one of the instrumental things that we must keep in mind is that the Holy Spirit must lead. That even as we go through this journey, as we continue to be prepared, as we talk about there is a time that we shall go out to do a work that has not been seen before upon the face of the world, Christ through the pen of John, reminds us that sometimes it takes patience. Be it in the material or the spiritual. It may take a while. And so the choice is upon us. What do we intend to do? Are we going to seek God's presence? Are we going to bring our requests before him? Or are we going to sit back and say it is the normal program? That we are ticking a box. We live in uncertain times and the temptation is to think how can we pump it up? And so we look back into into history and we ask ourselves what can I do? What can we do as a church? How can we get it working? Christ reminds us it is not manipulation. That while all revivals have a biblical pattern, each one of them is unique. Sometimes we sing very wonderful songs and we say we want the faith. We want to emulate what so and so, a spiritual hero, did. But there is caution that we cannot imitate into inspiration. An outpouring of the Holy Spirit is always different. But the biblical pattern is the same. My prayer is that this week, as we begin this session of Bible studies, we shall heed this request, this invite, rather, that Christ is giving to us. From tomorrow, we shall begin delving into directly something that is related to going out. We want to look at what is it that is the issue. What is the solution given by God? And why is it urgent that now we go out? 
as we go out, what is the message? Those are some of the issues we want to look at. But this background that Jesus gives us indicates to us that camp meeting, camp meeting has always been about going out. This is just one symbolism that Christ picks on. You can talk about the lighting during the camp meeting. There were huge torches they would light, which you could see from very far. Jesus would again, in this book of John, say that I am the light. It is in the context of camp meeting. And he was referring to those great columns that as they are being brought down, as that fire is being extinguished, and they are packing up things and they are going back home, Christ says that I am the light. This one has been extinguished, but I am the light. All that is in the context of camp meeting. My prayer is that God will speak to us, God will prepare us, that indeed we may not only drink, but ultimately, as Christ says, that we shall become living streams, or rather living streams will come from us. Indicating that the Holy Spirit does not come to make us feel comfortable, to make us feel happy. Because it is very exciting when you can lay your hands upon somebody and they get healed. That is very exciting. That you can prophesy, very exciting. That you can spontaneously speak in new languages or interpret them, very exciting. But Christ says the Spirit does not come to excite us. He says that the purpose is that as you drink, rivers of living water may flow from you. That the purpose of the Spirit coming upon us, God fulfilling the material and the spiritual in our lives, is what Pastor has alluded to, that we may become a witness. Because if you are not a witness then it means there is no power in the gospel. Christ says that I am here, talk to me, that come and drink. Then what? Then you become a witness. It is about going. And he says it is the context of camp meeting. It is not about eating. There was a lot of eating and celebration during camp meeting. They would bring, in fact, if you were to count the offerings that they were giving during camp meeting, no other ceremony has more offerings than camp meeting. And those offerings were not all burnt and left in. They ate. It was not about the eating and the growing fat for that week. Christ says that ultimately it is for the rivers of living water to flow from within. But that can only happen once you have been quenched. May the Lord quench us this week. May the Lord answer our prayers this week. May we see his hand in our lives this week. May we become rejuvenated this week. May we go this week. May the Lord bless you. Thank you.